Oh yay, welcome back. So this video will be sharing about post processing in Unity. Okay, so um, to actually have a post processing in your Unity, uh, you have to open 3D with Astra if you are using 2018.4 version. Okay, so it's actually included with post processing inside already. So right now I could actually just Post, create a project post processing test okay so create so if you are just using 2019 version it will be different to put in post processing in unity okay later i will just share with you guys um, how you can actually put it inside as well Okay, so what is post processing? Post processing actually it apply a full screen filter and effects to a camera image buffer. Okay, it's actually help to improve the visual of our application. So just like uh people using a camera to take the picture and we want to upload to Instagram, we put a filter for it and then it will look better. It's the same kind of ideas, is it? Okay. So without further ado, let us go inside to our projects. Yep, this is actually if you open 3D with Astra, then this is the first scene that you actually look at it. Okay, so this one have a very good effect because they actually use post processing as well. So here I actually did tell you with the description over here. Okay, so Right now, probably I won't use this. I will share with another um, scenes that I'm going to do some experiment because this actually have some um, effect already. Okay, so firstly, I'll go to asset store in your Unity. Probably I maximize this. Okay, we will get some free 3D asset to actually test it out. Okay, so I will have a 3D, 3D tick in here, and then I will take free asset. Okay, I will get can get the free asset. Okay, I will use this sample as the demo for this video. Okay, I'll go inside this. Asset store, okay. So because mine already have downloaded before, if you haven't download, you have to download and then import. Okay, I'll just import it. Okay, so this will import to our project right now. So later we'll use this set, uh, this sample to actually do some post processing effect. Okay. There's another way to actually put in the post processing. You can actually go to window, um, package manager. So normally in 2019 or 2018, it should have this package manager, package manager. So just in case that you open a 3D project and you didn't have a post processing inside, you can actually add in by using this. Okay. So. You will see under this post processing, yep, you will have this. Because right now in our project, we have the post processing already. That's why it's actually just coming up an uh, update. If you didn't have that in your project, it should have a install or what? Okay, it should have an install or something like that. Okay, so that's another way on how to put post processing in your Unity project. Okay, so after you actually import, you can minimize this window. Win, uh, window, sorry. Okay, so if you actually finish um import the just now the three D, the free asset, you should actually have this folder RPGPPLT. Okay, so if you have it, you can actually open the scene folder. There's a RPGPP scene, okay. Make sure you open it and then I will go to the scene itself. 
Okay, so this is a treaty, treaty asset that having, okay? So right now we have this main camera. So that's why in our game scene, we're seeing this view. Okay, let's go ahead with our post processing. How do I actually put a post processing? It's actually very easy because it's very depends on your main camera view. You have to go to the main camera, add a component called post process layer. Okay, post process layer. So make sure you actually add in in here. Okay, so what is a layer has not been set. Okay, so normally we actually put post processing. Okay, so later it will if affect the post processing layer that we wanted. Okay, so when we have it, and then I normally will create an empty game object. Set this position. Um, probably I just call it post processing profile. Okay, we need a profile over this post processing game object. Okay, so in this game object, I will add in a component called post process volume. Okay, so if without this post processing, uh, post process volume, it will not have you will not put this profile in here okay so right now we will need to create a profile for it okay i'll go to my asset folder i'll create a folder called post processing profile okay so go inside the folder i will right click create a post processing profile okay then i Probably we can call it like color correction. Or you can call it any name of it. Okay, then you are having this icon. Okay, so this is actually the profile. So we have to put inside this component over here. Make sure you add in. Okay, so after you actually add in this, you actually have to change this layer to post processing. So only it will actually taking some effect to you. If not, you won't have any mm, visual feedback. Okay. So right now, there's some um, add effect over here. Okay. So we need to add effect. Okay. Let's say I add ambient operations. Okay. Let's see what happened to it. So I have to open this. Okay, I'll on the mode. Okay, so I'll on the intensity as well. Okay, so the multi scale volume metric, right, is actually it run faster and you actually compute those enable platform. Okay, most of the platform is actually workable with this mode. Okay, for another one is scal scalable ambient. Uh, Occurrence is actually uh, for those that traditional or non-modern platform, you might need to use use this. Okay, mm -hmm. but most of it we can actually use this mode already, the multi skill. Okay, so intensity I can actually on it. Yep. Okay. Right now we didn't see any effect, right? Because there's something that we need to set up yet. Okay. We have to take this is global. Okay. If you didn't take this, it won't be affected as well. Okay. Yep. If you actually change this intensity, it's starting to have some effect of it already. So as you can see, ambient occlusion is actually darkened the whole of it and the intersection that's actually close to each other. Okay. So for for those that actually like effect by the sunlight it will actually look more natural okay that's why uh ambient occlusion is quite important in here uh probably i just set it to 0 0.5 yep it's look better compared to just now okay another thing that i like to use is actually um 
called color grading. Okay, there's a lot more to go. I will actually slowly explain to you guys, but I'll just share with those that I, I mostly like to use. Let's say color grading. Okay, so with this color grading, normally I'll turn this mood on, definitely yes. Okay, high definition surely is high HD already. Low D is depends on which one you want to choose. Okay, so I will use HD. And then after that, the moods. Okay, I can actually use this. Yep, it will look better. Okay, so you can actually change this to see which is actually better to you. But normally I just turn on SES, it actually will look very good already. Okay, so um, let's say white balance temperature, you can actually play around with it as well. Yeah, it's actually tune the color of the of the white balance. Yeah. Let's say I want to make it like a bit hot and warm color. Yeah. Well, probably I need to lower down this intensity a bit since like too high right now. Okay. So let's say the uh, post exposure. Yeah, if you turn it on, it will brighter. Yeah, looking good. So. That's why I actually like to use this color gradient. It actually can tune a lot of color of this environment. Okay, I can actually add an effect like um bloom. Let's try with bloom. Okay, so bloom we can actually use to do those neon effect. Okay, normally I just turn on the intensity. Yeah, if you actually on this, you see what happened to it. The breakout of here is actually changing like, um, how to say, there's a very bright color coming over from the image, okay? So Gloom actually reproduce an imaging artifact of real world camera and it produces a fringe of light extending from a border of bright area in an image, okay? So I might lower down the intensity. I don't need actually so so bright of it. Yeah, probably three or four good enough for mine. Okay. So people use this broom to do a very nice neon effect. Okay. Then we can actually add on the unity with. Um, this one also very really nice. We, we next, yeah, I, I don't know how to promote, pronounce this thing. Um, but I normally use it because it's, it can actually create some artist, artistic effect and draw focus to the center of image. Okay. So the intensity. See that? Okay, so there's a draw focus. Okay, probably we don't need so much as well. Just a little bit, like feel that um, the focus is supposed to be at the center of it. Okay, so probably smooth, smoothness. Okay, I think looking good for mine. Okay, so this is actually after we put post-processing effect. Let us just now recall back what we have initially. So if we just off this, this is the initially effect that we have. Okay, definitely after you added uh, this post-processing profile and the effect, it will looking good, looking better. Okay, so others, this is a four that normally I like to add. To, to ensure and to enhance the visual feedbacks of it. So if you actually want to add, explore more, you can actually look all this. So let's say auto exposure. It actually adjusts exposure. It's, it's actually kind of 
working the same as this post exposure a bit similar but you can play with it okay so let's say this chromatic ab aberration is actually um, used to replicate uh, the, this camera def defect okay so you can try it out to just see what kind of effect that you will saw yeah this is the effect that's meaning chromatic okay but right now if i don't want it i can actually remove okay so another depth of field is actually just like similar to the focus of our camera lens okay so for green green is actually it create a gradient noise okay normally we use this effect in horror games okay that sound cool right you should try it out okay so lens distortion so the shape of lens um and then it will distort the final render picture of it okay it's kind of very similar with how camera functioning in the real real life okay so motion blur is rapidly moving object or longer exposure type uh, so normally we use this motion blur in racing games just like mario karts or those kind of racing games okay so screen space reflection is actually used to create reflection such as wet floor surface okay yeah there's a lot of the effect that you can play around but most of the common one would be this four okay after you actually master all these four it will look very good really yep so that's all about my sharing in this video hope you like it remember to like share and subscribe thank you